I got a chance to work at the beginning of Skywalker Sound with the father of Skywalker Sound, Ben Burt. And uh, I remember the first time I was really flipped and so impressed by something Ben did with Raiders. The Hovitos are near. <clears throat> Poison is still fresh, three days. All of a sudden, there is a strange, otherworldly creature, almost a Star Wars creature. I don't know where he got it. And it made that entire jungle scene so friggin' alien. And when I first heard that, I said, this is gonna be a great adventure. It's gonna be a great adventure in sound. I had a conversation, a long conversation with Steve uh, over the phone about the nature of the whole film. You'll come back here for the chair. I think I said to him something about the fact, well, does the hero's hat stay on all the time? And he said, yes, it does. And then I understood the kind of movie we were making. You know, if the hat never comes off, even in a fist fight, then we're, we're in that realm of the uh, classic uh, Saturday afternoon adventure movie. <laughs> We knew that Indy had a whip, and of course we could have pulled the whip sounds from a library since obviously there's been whips recorded in the past, but no, we wanted to do it ourselves. Actually what happened was that Gary Summers, who was recording sound effects with me, spent the day on the set, and uh, the result of that was that Harrison had some time and came over to our editing room, and Gary and Harrison stood out back in the parking lot, and Harrison tried to show Gary how to crack the whip. It was a little too noisy to record it. So later, I took Gary Summers out to quiet locations. And uh, Gary did a lot of cracking of the whip. And we did it in different environments, in the trees, uh, out in the middle of the field. And we built up a library of whip cracks, uh, which was the basis for Indy's sound. A gunshot can just be a pop or a click, depending on where you record it, because it's just a sudden, very brief, uh, loud noise, like a hand clap. The actual Indiana Jones gunshot was a 3030 Winchester rifle that was recorded. We did a lot of different gunshots. We probably recorded, you know, a few hundred different guns in different locations. course we would pull the best from that but the Indiana Jones gunshot wasn't you know processed or really manufactured in any way in the studio it was pretty is pretty much exactly as it, as it is in the live recording we did <laughs> the giant boulder was a tricky sound to invent because it had to have weight but it also had to accelerate and move very fast and finding something that big and getting it to move fast was hard we had uh, several different sessions where we went out and tried to stage a boulder sound, and they were not successful. Um, but on one of the last days, we, um, we were coming back from the location, and we were on a steep hill, and we were in this little Honda Civic station wagon on a gravel road on this mountain, and we were just coasting down the hill without the motor running, and we realized that the car sounded really interesting. Well, we might have the sound here, so I hung out the back and put a microphone near the back tire of the station wagon, and we just coasted down this road, and as the car accelerated, it gave a sense of gathering speed, and it, uh, that ended up being really the basis for the giant boulder. The body blows and punches in the Indiana Jones films was another area that we worked hard and tried to come up with. Uh, a new sound, uh, although many of the sounds really, I think, were based on what we had heard in older films, the classic sound effects, but I wanted to remake them and do them in stereo and to exaggerate them probably in, in some ways because everything about Indiana Jones was somewhat of a comic book. We tried a lot of different experiments. We beat on pieces of meat. We broke chicken bones. Probably we had our most success with a pile of leather jackets and a few baseball gloves and making a loose uh, pile of this material and then whacking it with a baseball bat. And out of that came the whole library of hits. 
in, uh, in the Indiana Jones films. <laughs> There were a lot of elements that went into the well of the souls, uh, most principally were, was the snakes. And uh, we started out uh, recording some real snakes, but snakes don't really vocalize all that much. And uh, part of the element of the snakes is really their movement over each other. And uh, we've had a lot of luck over the years with cheese casserole. Um, my wife makes a cheese casserole, and when it's in the dish and you just run your fingers through it, it gives a real oily, mushy sound. And if you record that and build it up in several layers, you can make a nice sense of slimy snakes moving around the room. That was augmented with some wet sponges being moved around. In fact, I think it was on top of a skateboard on the rubber place on top of the skateboard where you stand. Certainly the most supernatural part of the film was the end sequence where they open the ark and the spirits flow out and destroy everyone. So quite a bit of sound went into that. It's obviously the kind of sequence where there's nothing to record on the set at all. It's all going to be manufactured later. One, two, three, four. And uh, the sequence begins uh, with the uh, lid being slid off the ark. And uh, I experimented with a few different things, but I found that sliding the toilet tank cover in my own home toilet was perfectly sufficient. And uh, if I recorded that in an echoey bathroom, it seemed to fit, although in a rather undignified way, the character of the ark itself. The ark itself, the humming, the, the uh, deep undulating tones that went with it, uh, were generated by a synthesizer. It's rare that I use an electronic synthesizer, but this was one case where I found uh, the kind of sound I wanted. I had an old ARP 2600, which is what I used to do R2-D2, and by reprogramming it, I was able to produce some wavering low-frequency tones, which became the basic sound. Once the uh, arc is opened and the spirits start flowing around, um, there's quite a bit of work there taking animal screams and some human vocalizations, uh, as well as dolphin cries, which we had recorded, and sea lions. And uh, I ran those through a vocoder, which keeps a sense of the original sound, but adds a musical tone that follows the same pattern as the voice. So it gave it an otherworldly quality. All the sparking and beams were from a set of recordings I made of the old gear that was used in the Frankenstein movies. There was a fabulous variety of electronic devices and lightning generators and things of that sort. And out of that came all the sounds for the beams and things. Each indie film was a new challenge because it, they covered so much ground. Temple of Doom suddenly had us running all around the world. So we really knew that we needed to just record a lot of new things. And they did actually go out and record while they were on location in Sri Lanka, some animals and birds that were native to the place. And that gave us a good start. Sound effects for the minecart chase uh, came from many sources. I started, as I usually do, by analyzing the actual sound. I mean, can we record some minecarts somewhere? And that led to the possibility that maybe a roller coaster would be a good thing to record. And uh, after a while, we actually set up a very interesting recording event, which was at Disneyland. Um, Gary Summers and I were allowed to go in there at night when no one was there and ride all the different roller coaster rides and record them without any music turned on or anything of that sort. A very strange night was spent there gathering some very high speed, you know, rolling cars and then they would screech around corners and they would clatter as they went up and down. 
that was the beginning of, of a lot of the mine car chase effects. You had to augment it with a lot of things, but principally the sounds done at Disneyland uh, was what you know gave us a variety of clangs and echoey rattling sounds which when pieced together in a controlled fashion gave us the sense of the minecart chase. And um, the minecart chase was a you know unique opportunity for us to do a high energy chase and to sustain it really with principally sound effects. And it, it kind of exhausted everyone on the whole crew to do that, myself included. Um, but along comes Last Crusade and as usual things are amplified even more. And uh, we have there a motorcycle chase, which goes to an airplane chase, which goes to a horse and tank chase, and kind of all in the same breath. Oh, rats. Uh. We always have sequences which involve a lot of dangerous creatures surrounding us. In Last Crusade, we're surrounded by rats. And like most movie animals, uh, they don't make any noise on the set. So um, I needed to make up sounds for what would be thousands and thousands of rats. And oddly enough, I ended up using chickens. I had uh, a group of uh, irritated chickens all clucking at once. And uh, I put them on a keyboard, the sound on a keyboard, and then played the very highest notes, which made the chickens go way up in pitch. And it made a funny kind of chirpy, well, it sounded like rats to me, and I guess everybody else believed it. But uh, those rats were really chickens. In the climax of the film, not only do we have the whole temple moving and mechanisms and stones turning, but we have an earthquake. And uh, a lot of those first sounds you hear of the floor splitting are really just rubbing on a balloon, you know, an inflated balloon with your, you're getting that squawking sound. Also, a lot of the stones falling and avalanche effects there came about because we spent a day once gathering stones and boulders and rocks around Skywalker Ranch and hauled them all the way up to the top of the big rock outcropping and then just shoved the whole thing off the cliff and let them all pour down the, down the front of the stone and we recorded that and it's become quite useful over the years to have that sound for all of our earthquakes. My association with Indiana Jones has been a very pleasant one for me, uh, creatively and for my career. Um, I shared an Oscar on Raiders of the Lost Ark with Richard Anderson for our sound effects editing. And uh, Last Crusade, which kind of capped the trilogy for me, I got another Oscar along with uh, Richard Hems, and that was, once again, uh, a vote of confidence for our work. And I look back on those as, uh, you know, obviously high points in, in terms of that part of my, my career. Thank <laughs> you.